Houston and 95.3 FM KT37GS Pasadena. Good morning and thank you for joining us for the Business Breakfast Talk Show where we serve you the most important meal of the day. That's right. We are serving success strategies and system side dishes each Saturday here on Synergy Radio 1480 AM. So grab your coffee and your croissant and let's get down to business. So we're your business breakfast host. And I'm Tiffany A. Washington. And I am Joy Hutton Lacey. This is Women's Small Business Month. Yes, it is. And our special guest today is Sinitra Hurd, who is a small business banker at Bank of America. She's going to give us the deets on how to make your business bankable, as well as give you tips on how to stay afloat. Well, before we get started... Some of you all missed out on how awesome last week's show were, and we were hoping to get that post reposted for you on Facebook. So we're going to make sure that that happens for you. But let's get right to it. Yes. <laughs> we're going to kick off this discussion with common mistakes business owners make when seeking funding. We'll talk about this topic more when Sunitra joins us. Yes. Uh, so, like Tiffany said, we're going to start off with common biz uh, mistakes business owners make when seeking funding. So... You know, the thing is, there are so many things you have to consider, and we, we started talking about some of these things initially um, in our, our first segment together, yes. uh, first, our first episode together. So one of the things is not knowing your credit score. Yeah. That's number one. Do not go into a bank without knowing your credit score. Uh -huh. You're thinking you're going to get a $500,000 loan, and your credit score is 453. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> So oh there is uh, your personal credit credit score, but mm -hmm. you also have your business credit score. Right. You can set up an experience business uh, Experian business profile because mm -hmm. you know we have the three credit bureaus: Experian, TransUnion, and, and Equifax. Equifax. Mm -hmm. So you can set up business profiles on these, and then also um, create a Dunn and Bradstreet profile because mm -hmm. this follows you. And actually, when doing contracts with certain businesses, they will pull your Dunn and Bradstreet profile to see if you're credit worthy. Um, or if you've even established any business credit. You know, uh, thank you for mentioning those things. I also wanted to tell our listeners that as far as your business profile is, is concerned, you, you need to get your personal business or your personal stuff checked as well. So, Absolutely. and I know Experian is kind of going through mm -hmm. their thing right now, but Equifax. <laughs> oh, yes. Equifax. Thank you for. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. So you just need to make sure that you are on the up and up in all of those places. Yes. So I interrupted you. I wanted you to keep telling us a little bit about this, uh, this Dunn's, Dunn and Bradstreet. Yes, so it's it's free to do both of these, to mm -hmm. create a business profile on both Experian and Dun & Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. And Dun & Bradstreet, you also hear people refer to it as D&B, mm -hmm. and they assign you a Dun's number, which follows you, you know, which, which allows you to build a credit profile, basically. Mm -hmm. So this is important because it's a unique nine-digit code that, again, when bidding on contracts, people will basically pull your credit report, but it's your business credit report. So definitely something that um, you, you want to establish as soon as you start your business. And then um, when also when you establish uh, credit in a business, you don't want to always use your, business, your personal credit score. Yeah. Um, because, um, you know, if you're racking up, you know, different credit cards on your personal, um, on your personal credit, this can run you more into debt. And in the event that your business fails, you still have to pay that back. You know, that is such an <laughs> important uh, thing to note. So note to everyone that's listening, please try not to use your personal credit to fund your business. So not having a business plan is oh, the next one. Yes, now, and we talked a lot oh about that. <laughs> yes, we had a whole show dedicated to not having or having a business plan yes. and the benefits of having a business plan. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, because it laces through all of our shows it's very important because it's the foundation of your business absolutely now what you need to consider is how that business plan is going to work itself for you <clears throat> and then you should also have proper financials within that business plan so that includes your profit and loss statement yes. your cash flow statement balance sheets mm -hmm. income statements and recent tax returns absolutely. all of those things need to be included in order for you to be considered 
worthy right of some of the things that small business owners need like your lines of credit exactly and there are things that banks look for specifically in mm -hmm. those business plans as well um, so you know having those financial is financials in order having financial records mm. and in order to keep track of those financial records you need to have an accounting software this should not just be done in Excel <laughs> although that's great <laughs> It but it's a little antiquated, it's a little mm -hmm. old-fashioned, and you need to have proper accounting software. There's QuickBooks, there's Wave, you know, things mm -hmm. that are, there are free services, you know, that you can use, FreshBooks, you right. know, for small businesses. And then you can evolve into more robust uh, accounting software. But it's important that when going to a bank, you have those financials because they're going to ask for that. And we're going to go into more detail when Sinitra comes on later, but... You know, um, having those financials, you know, such, such as the profit and loss statement, uh, the cash flow statement, uh, balance sheets, income statements, tax returns. Yes. Because if you do not have a business tax return, they're going to want to see your personal tax returns from prior years. Right. And as you said earlier, that's not a place that you really want to go. Right. <laughs> you want right. to stick with your business. Exactly. Your business tax returns. Exactly. So once you have the business plan in place, Tiffany, what about, you know, applying for a loan or thinking about you know what type of loan you should get well when you're applying for a loan now I have to personally put out this disclaimer mm -hmm. I'm a bootstrapper and we've talked <laughs> yes. about this before <laughs> so everything that I've done and accomplished inside of my business has been because of my own funding right so yes, I funded myself <laughs> that's why we have the expert coming so she yes. can teach us so if I want to scale up <laughs> right. You then need a different plan. I need a different plan, right? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, when you don't apply for a loan that works for you, then you just you still end up in a mm -hmm. world of trouble. So you need to be very educated on what type of loan uh, you need, and also if you whether you need a loan or not, because sometimes yes. it could just be a line of a line of credit. Uh, that you need for a short period of time and right. not a huge loan that lasts over over the course of, of X amount of years. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, <laughs> uh, also some things to consider too is, you know, looking at your, your cost, mm -hmm. uh, knowing if, so, you know, the thing is with a loan, when you get that loan, you have to pay all of that back. Right. All of it. Any funding you get from a bank, you're <laughs> you going to have to pay that back. back right? But with the line of credit, you can draw from that. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you get a $100,000 uh, line of credit, for example, and you only need $30,000 at that time, you pay on that $30,000. You're right. not paying on the $100,000. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider, too. Like, what works best for you financially? What do you need right now? Right. And maybe allowing some type of cushion, uh, cushion for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Also, not getting in trouble with all these types of business loans or advance fee loans online. Mm -hmm. There are so many scams out there. You would think that, man, I'm struggling trying to run a business. Why is somebody trying to scam me? <laughs> man, I mean, somebody's <laughs> always trying to hustle me, you oh know. So they have these things called advance fee loans. And basically, you pay them a fee for them to give you your, give them for them to give you money. That's right. crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, why am I paying to get money? Right. And then these businesses disappear. Mm -hmm. So stay away from those people. Yes. Um, so, yeah. And like I said, in, in terms of uh, evaluating if you need a loan or business credit, you know, there are some things to consider. And so we'll talk about that more when we get back. Yes, we'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be back after these messages. We are now Synergy Radio. Powerful talk that inspires change. This is Mayor Sylvester Turner. The great Dr. King said the measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but at times of challenge and controversy. That's the measure of a city, too. And as we dig out from Hurricane Harvey, I am proud to be a Houstonian. That's why I'm asking you to vote early starting October 23rd or on Election Day, November 7th. And please vote for all of the city bonds A through E. Proposition A is the final piece of the solution to the pension crisis. It protects retirement plans, for police officers, firefighters, and city workers. Propositions B, C, D, and E repair police and fire stations, parks and libraries, and health clinics. 
we can focus on rebuilding our city without raising taxes. Please join me by voting for all of the city bonds, propositions A through E. Early voting starts October 23rd. Election day is November 7th. Political ad paid for by Lift Up Houston PAC. Apex Telecommunications Services Incorporated is a full-service voice and data solutions company that has been serving the greater Houston area since 1989. Call Apex at 281-847-1921 and let us give you a quote. We are certified Panasonic and Yay Star resellers and Meridian North Star specialists. Nonprofits receive special pricing on all Panasonic voice solutions with a free seven-year warranty on equipment. With Yaystar S-Series and N-Series voice over IP PBX systems, you get a three-year warranty and there are no license fees ever. Call Apex at 281-847-1921. That's 281-847-1921, 281-847-1921, and ask for Herbert. Visit our website at www.apextel.com. I am Carlos Correa, and my heart goes out to our city of Houston and those affected by Hurricane Harvey. Hello, friends. I'm Dave Ward, and Carlos and I are proud to team up with Texas Mattress Makers and Houston Children's Charity to ensure that any child in need of a bed will receive a mattress, frame, and new linens. A hundred percent of your donation will go to the purchase of bed to put every kid in a bed for a better night's sleep. Please go to youcaring.com, Carlos Correa. And now, back to the... Okay, good morning, and we're back. Before we get back to it, good morning to Latricia and Kedrick joining us this morning. Thank you for being with us. So we were just talking about um, things to consider when you uh, are applying for a loan or yeah. funding from a small... from or from a a bank for right. a small business. Getting tongue tied right there. <laughs> so we were talking, we kind of talked about starting the budget conversation, but knowing, um, not knowing where your revenue currently stands, that's a huge mistake. Absolutely. Because you need to know how much cash you actually need and you need to know how much you can pay back. Because otherwise you're just getting into this cycle and it's, it's very bad. If you can't pay that loan back, you're going to be in trouble. Yes. And when you get in trouble with loans, that stays on your credit for a yes. long time. <laughs> so yes. uh, one of the things that I also wanted to highlight is that you need to create a budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in addition to knowing how much cash you need and how much you can pay back, the way that you figure that out is by creating that budget. Right. And when we talk about budgets, there are certain things that need to be included for your business <laughs> yes. budget. And some sample line items include how much do you have to pay for rent if mm -hmm. you're a storefront, the utilities and b the utility bills and the cost of goods right. sold, also any legal expenses and taxes that you incur, mm -hmm. those also need to be included in your budget marketing marketing mm -hmm. all of those things and yes. so uh we'll probably need to have a separate segment yes. on, <laughs> on that budgeting. on budgeting <laughs> yes. because it's so important a lot of us just spend money because it's there to spend right but you you'll run out of money quickly that right. way <laughs> and there are a lot of things that you really don't think about either that right. that you know you would consider like you said as line items so you really have to take the time to go through every single expense any future expenses that you might incur, you have to think about that as well. Right. And so I was reading up a little bit on Inc.com. And for Love those of side. you who are not readers of, of that particular online mm -hmm. site, it's great for business owners. Yes. It's INC.com. Mm -hmm. And so Inc. says fixed costs are those expenses that remain the same whether or not your sales rise or fall. Some examples include, like I said, rent, <coughs> lease furniture, mm -hmm. and insurance. Insurance. insurance is also yes, another big line big item depending mm -hmm. on what type of business you're in. Mm -hmm. So I know I have insurance for my business for when I go out and do trainings and things right. like that. So because people can try to yes. 
he try to come after you oh, for yeah. anything and you yeah. need to be protected, right? Exactly. Yeah. Gas, mm-hmm. all that. All yeah. of that. All of that is important. So when you think about your fixed costs, those are things that are always going to happen. They're mm-hmm. going to happen or they're going to be recurring, mm-hmm. if you will. Right. And then you also have your variable cost, and mm-hmm. your variable costs correlate with sales volumes. So these include cost of raw materials right. and the things you need to make products. Inventory and freight, just depending on what your particular, mm-hmm. what your particular audience is, right. and then there are also semi-variable costs, mm-hmm. and these are fixed costs that can be variable when influenced by the volume of business. Right now, we really get <laughs> down technical, and dirty until yes. we get really, Very we really technical. get in technical, yes. and we tr- typically try to stay away from being too technical. But these right. are some of the things that you really need to know when it comes to creating your budget yes okay so we encourage you to go and do some more research around this so this can include salaries telecommunications advertising Mm -hmm. as you mentioned and then finally Mm -hmm. there are your profits okay so you're in business to make money that's the bottom line so you have to estimate this figure by subtracting your cost from your revenue that's Mm -hmm. the very basic way to do it so those are some of the things that you need to consider when you're creating your budget yes Yeah. And also in creating your budget, do not wait until you are in a crisis to apply for a loan. Plan ahead for these expenses. Know exactly what you need and when. Mm -hmm. Because once you're in a crisis, depending on what bank you go through, it's not going to be overnight that you're going to get this funding. It may take a week. It may take two. It may take three. Uh, So you, you definitely have to... Um, plan ahead Mm -hmm. and also when taking out a loan build in a cushion for yourself Mm -hmm. you know because you don't want to operate your business how some people operate their personal life living paycheck to paycheck right because you can be in a business situation like that too where if something catastrophic happens your business will shut down because you don't have working capital. You know what? I am so glad that you said that because that has happened to so many of our business mm-hmm. owners, especially post Harvey. Yeah. Just not being prepared. The right. work, the level of work that you were once receiving goes mm-hmm. down. And then you end up having to be dependent right. on something or someone else in order to keep your business afloat. Absolutely. So don't find yourself in that situation. So whatever it is for uh, me personally, I always have a number that I multiply by whenever mm-hmm. I say I need something what is what yes. is the minimum that I need exactly. I always add extra because sometimes you'll forget something you may forget a line right. item on your budget or you may forget uh, that this was a recurring expense you right. know especially if you are a um, solopreneur yeah if you're doing a lot of things on your own it's easy to forget exactly. so always like joy said add that cushion in right mm-hmm. and so when thinking about uh, applying for a loan also understanding the risk involved mm-hmm. you know this is a debt that you're taking on and you need to understand what type of debt you're taking on so you have unsecured versus secured loans for mm-hmm. example and with unsecured loans the credit scores are much stricter Mm -hmm. you know that banks require and because this puts banks at a higher risk when they're doing unsecured loans and then for a secured loan it's less risky but the bank can take everything you know if you everything everything (laughs) if you default on that loan unless of course if you have an LLC but that's a that's a different conversation and how to set up your business uh, structure to protect yourself But if you are joining this conversation, we want you to call us if you have any questions at 832-230-5592. And if you are live streaming with us, please ask us questions in the comments and like our page, Business Breakfast Talk Show. Yes. And also for the people who are listening, what we want to do is we really want to get the word out about the Business Breakfast yes. Talk Show because it is your most important meal of the day. So share this mm-hmm. with other people who would like to join us for breakfast. So go ahead. If you're listening <coughs> through our live stream, go ahead and share this out to your page. And mm-hmm. if you have any groups that you follow, share this out to those groups as well so we right. can make sure that we um, impact the masses. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So we talked about already, you know, common mistakes you make when seeking funding. But before you even get to that point, you have to actually go through a bank, right? Yes. So let's talk about what we need to look for in a bank, Tiffany, because we have so many options. You know, you have credit unions, you have small community banks, and then you have the big banks. Right. So let's kind of dive into that. Okay, so... 
what type of lending authority does your bank have? Mm -hmm. That has to do with yes. the size of the bank, right. how much underwriting they have, all of those things. You want to be considerate of what bank you go to. Right. Um, and that comes down to relationships as well. Mm -hmm. What banks do you have relationships with? I know personally, I bank with several different banks. Right. All for different reasons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you shouldn't have all of your eggs in one basket right. either. So right. wherever you go to ask for this money, you want to make sure that you're strategic about where you're placing different pots of money so that right. they can see that you've put some trust into them and you've started building relationships <laughs> with them. Absolutely. Yeah. So what else would you add to that, Joy? As a small business, you want to know if that bank has a relationship with the Small Business Administration. Yes. Because, you know, there are different terms um, and conditions when getting a Small Business Administration loan. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, Sinitra can speak more to that about the criteria that are, that are involved for that. But, yeah, I mean... What better way than to have a bank that supports, actually supports small businesses? Right. And then, you know, what type of incentives are there for business accounts? You know, what type of services do they offer? Because if you are a small business and you plan on growing, mm -hmm. which I hope you would. Yes, you to, absolutely. <laughs> you are going to need payroll, insurance, you know, retirement accounts, for example. And so maybe you just want a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't want a one-stop shop, then you, you have to obviously look at different banks that have your needs. But looking at all those services, you know, what type of perks are there? Do I get points, you know, mm -hmm. travel rewards on these credit cards? Right, and, exactly. You know, do I, are, are there, are fees waived on certain accounts, you know? Looking at the fee structures, these are all things that you have to consider, you know, because people just forget about all this stuff. It's like, I just need to set up a business account. But wait, <laughs> but wait, there, yes. there are other things. There's more. Yes, there's more. <laughs> so, you know, looking at that fee structure, because you may be hit with fees and that all affects your bottom line. You know, if you don't have a certain amount of um, money in your account, they will charge you a fee. You know, and, and looking at the benefits of having a business checking and a business savings account. Mm -hmm. People don't think about the business savings account either. Um, yeah, so what what else? Well, we talked about the fee structures, the bank's reputation. Did we talk? We did, we hadn't said anything about no, the bank's we did reputation. Not. Yes. So, with the bank's reputation, uh, you know, there's always going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly yes. about most organizations. Right. However, you want to look at how these organizations have recovered from past mistakes mm -hmm. and whether or not they have a pretty clean reputation and history overall. Right. You definitely want to review that before you decide to jump in with any of your banks. So, of Absolutely. course, your larger banks have less of a poor reputation because when you start dealing with the masses, it's always going to be. Right. They're always going to be naysayers, but then they're mm -hmm. always going to be people who absolutely love them. Right. But when you get into those smaller banks, think about whether or not they have more than one chain, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. um, are they well known, even if they're a smaller bank, and the type of services they provide? Because if right. you're going to these one-off banks, yes, there is... A, a higher likelihood that that bank might close exactly. at some point. <laughs> and know? not only that, you want a bank where you can build a relationship with the banker. Mm -hmm. You know, up, update them on your progress because when it is time to get funding, they're like, oh yeah, Tiffany, I remember your business. You've been keeping me updated and so I want to help you out. So looking at the pros and cons of versus small versus, you know, for a small versus a large bank because usually smaller community banks, they, they are more in tune to the local market conditions mm -hmm. and are more willing to work with your overall pro, uh, profile if you've established a relationship with them. And then large banks are usually looking at that credit score. They're like, mm -mm, we're not considering <laughs> anything else right. unless you have a really good relationship. And like you said, considering a bank's location, um, does that bank have national locations? Because, you know, we have to have an empire state of mind here. We yes, don't just want to stay in Houston. Yes. And, you know, if you need that business to be in close proximity to your home, office, or business, because you have to make lots of deposits. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider as well. Um, also, how often do you use technology for your banking needs? Yeah. If a bank has limited options, it's not a good fit for you. I need right. a bank with an app. You know what? <laughs> I need a bank with an app, and I need a bank where it's just easy for me to transfer money yes. online to do yes. whatever it is that I need to do. So exactly. if you don't, if you don't like, have that, is there that's an app already. For that? <laughs> 
there, <laughs> is an, there app an app for that? Because if not, we got a problem. Exactly. So. so one of the things I wanted to share with those of you all who are listening, I want you all to know that you can share this video out. Yes. And we're getting ready to go to break. But when we come back, we'll have Sunitra Heard from yes. Bank of America. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call here at 832-230-5592. We'll be right back. All right. To KLVL 1480. It's radio at the next level. Prairie View AM football returns to action Saturday at Alcorn State. Listen to all the action right here on Synergy Radio 1480 AM. The pregame show begins at 1.30, followed by kickoff at 2 p.m. Prairie View AM Athletics. All out. All game. All season. This is Mayor Sylvester Turner. The great Dr. King said the measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but at times of challenge and controversy. That's the measure of a city, too. And as we dig out from Hurricane Harvey, I am proud to be a Houstonian. That's why I'm asking you to vote early starting October 23rd or on Election Day, November 7th. And please vote for all of the city bonds A through E. Proposition A is the final piece of the solution to the pension crisis. It protects retirement plans for our police officers, firefighters, and city workers. Propositions B, C, D, and E repair police and fire stations, parks and libraries, and health clinics. We can focus on rebuilding our city without raising taxes. Please join me by voting for all of the city bonds, propositions A through E. Early voting starts October 23rd. Election day is November 7th. Political ad paid for by Lift Up Houston PAC. Thanks to Synergy Radio Network and KLVL, listeners in the greater Houston area now have a bigger, stronger information and entertainment platform. Read all about it in this week's issue of the Houston Forward Times or go to HoustonForwardTimes.com. The all-new Phil and Derek's Restaurant and Jazz Bar, 1701 Webster. The perfect place to kick back, relax, enjoy some great music and delicious food. We have a lunch buffet, dinner buffet, and a buffet on Saturday and Sunday. Plus, some amazing menu items to choose from. Live entertainment seven nights a week. Phil and Derek's 1701 Webster, corner of Webster and Jackson. Open daily, 11 a.m., Sundays, 1030 a.m. Call 281-501-3261 for more information. We are now Synergy Radio, powerful talk that inspires change. Welcome back. If you're just join us, joining us, we've been talking about common mistakes people make when seeking funding, as well as things to look for when shopping for a bank. So we're here with our expert guest, Vice President of Small Business Banking at Bank of America, Miss Sunitra Hurd. Good morning. Good yes. morning. Welcome to the show. We're Thank so you. glad to have you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you help small businesses. Um, a little bit about my background. I'm going to date myself here now. <laughs> I've been uh, in banking for um, just about 20 years now. Okay. Uh, a large portion of that has been in business banking. Um, and helping uh, entrepreneurs uh, realize their dreams. Um, And so now I uh, actually work with Bank of America. I've been there for about two years, but um, of course (laughs) I say that my views today expressed on this show and this broadcast are not necessarily the views of Bank of America. Right. Uh, so this is just uh, Sanitra's advice. Yes. 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 Thank you for that, that disclaimer, <laughs> right? Because people yes. like, she said. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, we, we I love right. the disclaimer. Yes. Yes. That's, what, that's what it means to come prepared. Yes. Love it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So mm-hmm. you've been in you've been in business for about 20 years, you said, uh, about, been doing this particular type of work. seven years old, eight, somewhere up in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, you look beautiful, honey. Well, let's 
to start us off, tell us a little bit about your definition of what a startup is. You work with small businesses all of the time, mm -hmm. and we hear different def different definitions of what a true startup is. Mm -hmm. So what would a typical banker's definition be of a startup? It would be exactly what it states, a <clears throat> startup. If you're starting up your business, mm -hmm. you are going to be considered a startup. If you're under two years in business, two years of filing tax returns, you're going to be considered a startup. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. All right, so let's dig right in then. So let's talk about some of these deeper questions. Mm -hmm. The issue of credit when it comes to small business owners. Now, uh, Joy and I like to give people tidbits and mm -hmm. tips and tools <laughs> and all of this. So mm -hmm. let's start with the five C's of credit. Okay. So character, credit score, mm -hmm. capacity, mm -hmm. capital, and collateral. Absolutely. She's okay. Like, yeah, I did yeah. this in my sleep. <laughs> I did this in my sleep. <laughs> right there. Yes. 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 So we know that character is a sh having a strong management team, integrity, mm -hmm. a proven track record. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you look for in addition under that mm -hmm. character piece? Obviously, <clears throat> the credit score is going to be a big factor in character. So mm -hmm. this speaks volumes to, to character. I mean, not necessarily because, you know, life happens. But, right. you know, when you go and take a look and you look at the track record, mm -hmm. um, that's why we consider your personal credit uh, whenever you're applying for Business, a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so the credit score, big deal. We talked mm -hmm. a lot about that during mm -hmm. our first segment of the show. What about uh, capacity? What are some of the things you use your, you use to measure the capacity or the ability to repay a loan? The business plan. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I can't really state how important this is, and I mean, this really, truly, I spend a lot of time. Um, speaking with people who want to start businesses, right. um, who have the desire to start businesses, how I weed out the serious ones, mm -hmm. yeah. go get me a business plan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it's really, it's a lot of work, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, you won't be able to get me one, one and two pages. I mm -hmm. need to know the projections. Your, you know, I mean, literally everything. Go do your homework and come back. And right. And then we can go from there. Right. So when you say go do your homework and come back, mm -hmm. like how long, for the people who actually do that, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. how long does it typically take them to get that business plan created? Um, kind of depending on the industry. So mm -hmm. if it's going to be a food truck, mm -hmm. obviously it one, two weeks maybe, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but if we're talking about you're going to start up your own um uh, medical, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, uh, home health care. Right. Know, it's mm -hmm. different type of, you know, it just kind of depends. So right. it yeah. may take you a week. It may take you two months, it, you know, sometimes even longer. Right. Depending. And so in other words, you're not looking for a one page business plan. No, absolutely not. Because we talked about those lean canvas mm -hmm. uh, business plans mm -hmm. and we were like, do not bring that to a bank. Don't bring it. No, <laughs> absolutely not. You know, and, and the great place to start <laughs> if you do not have the, uh, uh, the resources to make your own business plan right. and you know all of that good stuff everyone is not able to do that mm -hmm. a great resource would be score houston yes and so yeah. you know they are great with that and that's also how they weed out the serious right. the potential is you know they will give you all of the resources you need to write a ironclad business plan exactly mm -hmm. so what are some of the key things that you look for in a business plan that they must have in there well i personally won't use that as consideration for anything other than just to make sure that you're serious. Okay. So, um, but, you know, basically, it's just, you know, just the structure. Mm -hmm. The uh, you, you, If you don't have a great infrastructure, just everything set up, you're going to fail. Just from, mm -hmm. from, you can't just go and <clears throat> start shooting in the dark and hope that you stick to something. You know, right. you have to have some guidelines and um, uh, you've done your research in regards to what other restaurants that are mm -hmm. serving the same food that are around you or whatever businesses right, you have around you. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the competition and uh, what, where's the next dental office? Where's the next, you know, just right. basically you, that you know what you're dealing with. Before You've you done go your into, research. You've done your research. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, in leading into the next C, capital, because we're talking about the business plan, mm -hmm. Having that cash flow and, you know, showing that you've put some skin in the in the game. Is, mm -hmm. is that required, you know, when, when applying for a business loan? Um, not necessarily. Okay. Um, with startups, I will tell you that it is almost impossible to get a loan from a traditional financial yes. institution. So mm -hmm. the Wells Fargo's, Bank of America's, whatever, unless you are in medical. Right. So you're starting out dentist, doctor, or whatnot, mm -hmm. you won't be able to... Uh, get a loan in that way, but um, 
in regards to, there are some alternate, you know, lenders, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, that won't require the same thing. Right. But, um, you, of course, you know, you have the SBA. So um, if the credit score is not exactly where it needs to be or as strong as it needs to be or you don't have enough for a down payment, mm -hmm. if you're doing owner-occupied, mm -hmm. then the SBA would be a better, you know, route for you to go. So uh, the capital, you know, this, we always say in banking, cash is king. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and that's the truth. And uh, as I was sitting out in the lobby and I heard um, one of you ladies mention, you know, diversifying, having money in different banks. Mm -hmm. That's not always a good thing if it's a lending okay. year. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you want to make sure that, yeah, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you have your money where you're trying to get it. Right, money. exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Because mm -hmm. we're going to take that in consideration right. and, you know, whether or not you can pay. Some banks will say, well, get me the statements from your other ones. Mm -hmm. Well, not always. You know, yeah. sometimes yeah. we want to see if you, you want us to bank with you mm -hmm. and you should be banking with right, us. Exactly. Right. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. As we mm -hmm. building those relationships. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so in building those relationships, because I know even with my bank, I, I had a really good small business banker that I loved and I'm I like, what happened that. to them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I'm like, they just seem to hop around so often. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, but I really liked her. Mm -hmm. If you're hearing me, Jacqueline, where are you? <laughs> That's okay, Jacqueline. You Jacqueline at Chase Bank. <laughs> Chase, but yeah, I'm just like, where did she go? But mm -hmm. yet, you you try to build these relationships, mm -hmm. and so what happens when that banker leaves? Well, I always always <clears throat> lead my conversations with my business owners to say, you are not banking with Bank of America, mm -hmm. you're banking with me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. your banker. Yes. Right, and right. Um, I pride myself on the fact that, um, and I'm, <clears throat> I will stay. I'm loyal, mm -hmm. and especially I love working for the bank, and I'm mm -hmm. not just saying that just in case someone hears. Right. I truly do love working yeah. for Bank of America. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's important that you build those relationships because if they do leave, usually they're going to another bank. Right. right? And mm -hmm. they're going to call you. They're going to reach out to you. Yes. Or maybe they are promoted and they're doing something different in the bank, but mm -hmm. they will hand off the portfolio if they can't handle it anymore okay. mm -hmm. to, someone, to else someone else and make sure that you have that warm transition. Right. But that's what a, a good mm -hmm. banker would do. Yeah. No shade, Jackie. Right. <laughs> you know, you want to make sure that, you know. Oh, she just left me. Just, you know, me. You know, I've been doing this for a long yeah. time, and I understand how important it is because once you start with someone mm -hmm. um, yeah. and you have been there from the ground right. up, it is very important that you let them know, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm going to transition over to a different position. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we all, you know, have dreams and aspirations and, you know, hopes to do different things in our careers. And, exactly. you know, you may not be there forever, but you want to make sure you have that warm transfer to say, listen, right. this is my, this is my client. Take care of her. Exactly. This is my number. If you need me going forward, right. this mm -hmm. is where I am. You know what I mean? Right. So, mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm, I make sure I do that. That's, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really that, good. That's absolutely important it right is. right so. let's add, let's talk a little bit about uh the collateral piece mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. when you go into and and a business mm -hmm. or when you go into a bank excuse me when you go into a bank mm -hmm. when <laughs> i get ready to talk to you and sit down and talk to you are you going to ask me about all of my assets yes. and things of that nature mm -hmm. why is that important that's important because it's just really again depending on the lender mm -hmm. um bank of america is an asset asset based lender so we okay. want to know what assets you have right uh -huh. it'd be tangible i need to be able to put my hands on right it, you know what i mean mm -hmm. so uh then you have some some uh banks that will lend to your contracts and your mm -hmm. uh, account receivables and right things that bank of america <clears throat> is just not really interested in that so uh you do have some banks that will um well Depending on the situation. So mm -hmm. let me just say that. Mm -hmm. So do you have some banks that will say, okay, now you have a great big contract with the city of Houston mm -hmm. and you need X amount. Right. So let's sit down and talk about what that means for you. Exactly. So you, and, and that will be more of the smaller mom and pop type mm -hmm. of banks that they can look at your business plan and take a look to see, you know, right. um, your contracts, your account receivables and lend to right. that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. But, and that's why it's so important to have a good banker and yes. not just a bank. Right. Because... I, I, since I've been doing this for so long in the city of Houston, I have resources all over the city of Houston. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a business plan or contracts and uh, account receivables and things of that nature that we need to see about getting you, you mm -hmm. know, financing for, instead of you doing the research, you have a right. banker that has already done that for you. Exactly. So, so what about when you, you know, a person doesn't have collateral? Mm -hmm. Um, but they've generated some revenue in their business. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you what do you do? Well, it just Again, if we were talking about someone who's been in business for uh, two years, um, mm -hmm. we're able to lend to um, what you're doing in annual sales. And so mm -hmm. uh, banking standard is almost uh, across the board, 
10 percent of your annual sales is what we'll consider to lend to you yeah. so if okay. you're doing a uh, million dollars in annual sales we're oh we're getting about, cut off yeah, sorry <laughs> that's our break <laughs> all right we'll so, be back guys yes we'll this be right very, back very very exciting topic <laughs> In the past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home, and we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24-7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you can with transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Gotta have you here on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. This is Rashawn McDonald. Welcome to The Journey with Tiffany Smith. Hello, my name is Les Brown. I'm Paris Ely. We're your hosts, Tristan and Cece. This is Oscar Hines. Hey, it's Zakia Larry Live. This is Nicole R. Coleman. Hey, and I'm Tasha Evans. This is the reality check, Dr. Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Welcome back to the show. I'd like to shout out our live studio audience once again. Tune in every day, 1480 AM. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Tune in to Synergy Radio 1480 in your car, in your house, or on any mobile device at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is Jolanda Jones from I'm a Tell It. When you're not able to watch us live on your mobile device, be sure to stay connected to Synergy Radio 1480 anywhere in Houston, in your house, in your office, or in your car by tuning in to 1480 AM. Synergy Radio Network, where it all comes together. In the past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home, and we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24-7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you go. That's where you go. With transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. And we are back. So we were really getting into that collateral discussion yes. because I think people really need to know, you know, what do they need to get bank, bank ready? Mm -hmm. You know, and so having your stuff in order and, you know, I was asking you, Sinitra, you know, what type we were talking about, what types of collateral you need to have or um, if you don't have collateral, then, then what are your options? Um, well, if you don't have collateral, Obviously, we're going to really, really lean heavily on the credit, mm -hmm. your personal credit. Um, and so um, that's basically really the only option you have from there is being able to have a strong enough credit score. And so um, our lending uh, soft spot or the sweet spot would be about a 680 or higher. Right. Score. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would people do who have less than 680 what would be some of the recommendation recommendations or advice you would give to people who are struggling in that area I actually refer a lot of my clients to um, someone that uh, I've used before um, to do some credit counseling mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. um, helping you kind of uh, dispute things on there that mm -hmm. shouldn't be there anymore right um, I mean the average American really do not check their credit as much as mm -hmm. they should so mm -hmm. um, you know, just go and get it clean and right. start to just really follow the credit advice that they're giving you right. to, you know, get yourself ready for it. So, get yourself yeah. back. So right. it may take a little bit. Because uh, yeah, I'm sure depending they're... on how bad it is. I mean, yeah. if we're talking about you're, you know, in the low fives, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're going to pray for you and we're going to... Yeah. <laughs> 
pray for you. Get to where you need to be. Get that together. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, the good thing about credit is that it is uh, repairable and yeah. fixable. Yes. And so mm-hmm. you have to give it some time. But if you have, you know, you're 650 or so, it can take six months or so. And then right. you'll be ready for it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. At what point can you use your business um to apply for credit because you know using your personal credit score mm-hmm. at what point can you can you use your business most banks are going to require that you actually um personally guarantee okay until you're at about maybe 20 million dollars in annual oh wow service. okay, okay. Yeah. can you say that again <laughs> right. please yeah, you're going to have okay. to personally guarantee you know until you're doing about when well, you're talking about the walmarts the sears wow. the targets the, okay. you, know, uh-huh. you don't have to have a you yes know, guarantor. right and then if it's a mm. non-profit you right. won't have to have a guarantor it, okay you can apply with the nonprofit, right. not a guarantor. Okay. Gotcha. But other than that, unless you're doing about twenty million in annual sales, wow. there's no way in the world that you're not going to okay. personally guarantee. And so, All right. Yeah. There you that's go. that's and good. That's to really know. one of those <laughs> aggravating conversations for me because yeah. um, you know, well, I don't want to personally guarantee. Well, it's your baby. Right. It's my business. Uh, right. You know what I mean? So yes. you want us to just back it and yes. you don't trust it? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know what I right. mean? So it's yeah. like, well, yeah. you know, that's really it speaks volumes. Right. So, yeah. Put your I money mean, where your me, mouth yeah, is. Exactly. I would throw it on the table all day, every day, mm-hmm. if it was something that I knew mm-hmm. that I wanted to do. Right. And I believed in it. So mm-hmm. you're not wanting to put your personal credit on the line for your business. Yes. Um, unless you have several partners and you feel like it should be, you know. But other than that, that's just, I mean, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you're just joining us, we're here with Sinitra Hurd. Yes. And we've been having a great time. Mm-hmm. And we want you all to know that she is the vice president of small business banking at bank of america and i want you all also to know (laughs) that we want to make sure that you are in tune with us and that others are in tune with us so Mm -hmm. take a minute to share if you haven't already shared or tune in to 1480 a.m we're also here in houston on the radio yes and so we're having this credit conversation because it's a big one so in building your business credit how what's the best way to go about doing that well, um, the best way to go about it is to make sure that you have at least three trade lines. Mm-hmm. So uh, just having just a business credit card is not enough. And so mm-hmm. uh, trade lines would be anything from the water delivery, the coffee delivery to okay. your, you know, uh, if you have a trade line with staples, it, mm-hmm. it can be anything. But okay. having three trade lines is what's uh, important. Okay. okay. That's mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And when people get ready to start seeking financing, they can do it off bat, off the off the cuff, right? They don't have to be in it for X amount of years before they say, hey, I'm ready for a loan. No, you don't. So you won't be able to walk into a traditional right. uh, mm-hmm. financial institution to do that, but you don't have to wait for that long. Um, again, SCORE is a great resource to mm-hmm. help you find you know, lenders. Uh, having a great banker is a great resource to help yes. you find lenders. I have relationships with uh, different um, institutions that will actually lend. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the terms are not always favorable. Right. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do until you can exactly. do right. better. So, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about your businesses that typically come into your office? What type of businesses do you typically fund? I will tell you what we, what Bank of America steers away from okay, a good. little bit yeah. with funding because that list of them right. yeah. is too long. So <laughs> right. obviously anything that will... Um, kind of be questionable in regards to strip clubs, uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, things of that nature, um, clubs in general, uh, something that can just, you know, fall apart. Right. The, the, um, the restaurant industry mm-hmm. will be a hard one mm-hmm. to get lending for unless okay. you're talking about franchises and you, right. you're now at your fourth location and we're, you know, right. you're right. very strong and mm-hmm. you have a lot of numbers. Mm-hmm. But um, you, you'll be able to get some type of funding and financing, uh, but not necessarily a line of credit. So mm-hmm. you have to understand what a line of credit would be used for. Um, li- and I have people walk in all the time, I-, I need a line of credit. Well, no, not necessarily. Right. Let's sit down and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because if you are in a restaurant mm-hmm. and um, you're getting cash every day, mm-hmm. you're getting cash on delivery, well, you won't qualify for a line of credit because the line of credit is there to cover cash flow gaps. Right. Right. And that's what it's designed okay. for. Mm-hmm. So um, if you have account receivables and you have um, 
clients that, you know, have net 30, mm -hmm. net 60, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what it's designed for. If you're getting ready to do some additions uh, to your restaurant and upgrade your equipment, well, that's a term loan. That's not right. a lot of credit. So right. go back, do your research, find out how much you need and mm -hmm. come back and talk to me. And then we can do that. So, exactly. Um, but we will, of course, oil and gas right now is, you know, still in our red area. Mm -hmm. I see that changing in the mm -hmm. future. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you're in oil and gas, kind of, you know, um, the travel industry, that's going to be a kind right. of, you know, hard one to get funding for. But it just really depends on the industry. And right. again, having a banker that you can come and talk to and say, I need funding. If I can't do it, mm -hmm. I can take that one piece that you right. need mm -hmm. and make sure that you get what you need. Right. What about professional services? I always find that kind of tricky because... You know, a lot of people have a hard time scaling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I do consulting and, mm -hmm. and Tiffany um, does consulting uh, in a capacity as well. So, you know, when you're in professional services, if you don't have a product, then mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you approach a bank for funding? I have a lot of people ask me questions about that. And so... Mm -hmm. um, well, it just, again, depends on the business plan, um, on the structure, how strong your consulting business is, where your money is coming from, mm -hmm. and what you're needing the financing for. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So there is a wave of online businesses mm -hmm. now. Yes. And we're getting away from a lot of the more brick and mortar type of mm -hmm. businesses in some ways. Mm -hmm. So which would you say is easier to finance? Ooh. <laughs> um, well, it is it's uh, hit it right, right there. <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> again, you know, we're going to go and look at the last two years. And so if you're doing, uh, you know, really well in annual sales, we'll take that in consideration. But brick and mortar uh, is going to be easy because, well, if you're already owning it, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you actually own the brick and mortar and right. whatnot, so obviously that's an asset, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So th that would be easy. Online, um, if you actually have a need for a line of credit, you know, because you are doing so much, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatnot, and you, you are, you're selling online, you have a lot, you won't use a line of credit for inventory. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Never tell a bank you're using a line of credit for inventory. Okay? Yes, yeah. You won't <laughs> use, um, uh, you know, use it for inventory, but, you know, at least to kind of cover some of that, you know, cash right. flow gaps or whatnot. So mm -hmm. it just really depends on how strong the business is. It's really right. no cookie-cutter answer for that yeah. question, but um, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's really no <laughs> cookie-cutter answer for that. Just kind of really depending on if you own the brick-and-mortar, that's an asset, and so you can lend toward that. And so, um, and then if you don't own the brick and mortar, but you have equipment in there that you own, mm -hmm. it's assets. Okay, you can lend gotcha. toward that. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, we have thoroughly enjoyed you being here yes. in studio today. <laughs> Where can our listeners find you if they're looking for guidance on mm -hmm. financing their small business? Um, I uh, actually will leave my contact information with you guys as well so you can um, – uh, posted on the uh, page, but um, my uh, cell phone number, uh, mobile for the company is 281-678-5221. My email address is my first name, Sanitra, S-A-N-I-T-R-A dot S dot heard at bankofamerica.com. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing no, that. Thank so you, guys you, for you yes, all have a direct you. contact yes, to Sinitra absolutely. now. Absolutely. Use her as a resource absolutely. and an asset for yourself. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you for tuning in yes, to the Business Breakfast you. Talk Show, yes. your most important meal of the day. So don't forget to share the video as well as like our Facebook page, Business Breakfast Talk Show. If you have a question you want answered or you're seeking a partner with us through sponsorship, go ahead and email us at breakfast at synergyradionetwork.com. We'll see you next week. Breakfast is served. <laughs>and opinions expressed on KLVL 1480 talk programs are those of the host, guest, and callers and are not necessarily those of this station, its owners, management, other hosts, or advertisers. Show topics on this station may include conversations on any lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practices. KLVL, a Synergy Broadcasting Company. We are now Synergy.